So let's start with this. Uh, you knew you were in play at the deadline when you found out a hockey crazed market like Vancouver. What did you think? I was really excited. Um, you know, when I got the call, obviously uh, right off the bat, um, it's it's not a fun call. But then, uh, you know, right after that, um, you know, really excited to be here in Vancouver and um, see all these crazy fans and um, you know how they come out to every game and they support the team. And um, you know, it's a great team, great organization. Everyone's been first class all the way. So, um, you know, we just got to keep winning some hockey games. How quickly do your thoughts turn from the shock and maybe surprise of being dealt to uh, looking at a roster and saying, hey, I might fit in with this guy or this might be a line mate that I'd like to play with? Or that I'm going to the playoffs. <laughs> well, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much right away, I think. <laughs> uh, looking right at the, that was the first thing I looked at was uh, this, this is a good team that go really deep in the playoffs and win a Stanley Cup. And um, I haven't done that yet in my career. So that's, yeah. uh, that's one of my goals for sure. So, um, you know, I was excited for that. And uh, look at their decor and then look at their offensive players and uh, you're excited to see you know, how much speed they have you know how much pace they play with and mm -hmm. uh, obviously the Sedins get to watch them every night so <laughs> that's good hey well on that topic we got a tweet from I think it's uh, AA and he wants to know if you knew how good the Sedins were before you joined the team you oh. saw them in full flight tonight with a lot of points. Yeah, I mean, uh, you play against them, and, you, you know, you, I haven't played much in, in, in Vancouver against them, so you don't really get to see them every night and, and see how special, um, you know, they play together. Uh, one feeds off the other, and they make plays, and somehow they're always uh, open in certain spots and, and, and making little passes. So, um, you know, it's fun watching them, but sometimes you got to, you know, look at yourself and play your game mm -hmm. and stop watching the Sedins. Yeah. Well, listen, Dallas is trying to reestablish itself as a hockey market. You had eight years in Buffalo, which is a hockey town, but I think we can say it's not quite like it is in Vancouver. We've got some interesting video here that uh, gives you an idea of what you're wait or what, what's waiting for you or what was waiting for you. The door is open on Wednesday to the Canuck Room, and this is the media horde that goes right to your <laughs> stall. Now, there were a few more reporters here on that day because it was trade deadline day, but this is generally the goal of it here in Vancouver. You ready for it? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, at first it was uh, looking around like, what's going on right now? And uh, <laughs> yeah. well, I knew it was coming. They, they gave me a heads up. And, yeah, is President know, Obama here today or yeah. something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, they gave me a little heads up to see what was going on. And, um, you know, I saw all the camera crews come in and, you know, it's uh, and all the guys, you know, started yelling some stuff out, you know. <laughs> so it is a good, they got a good bunch of guys in this uh, locker room right now. So um, it, it's been fun playing and, and uh, hopefully we can keep winning hockey games. Now, since you're traded, you, you guys have a day off tomorrow, you told me. So how hectic is your life? Do you actually get to enjoy the day off or do you have things you have to get done tomorrow because you won't have many of those left? Uh, yeah, I think well, a couple things to do. Um, you know, it's uh, when you get traded to, uh, you know, to Canada, it's different right there. And then you got placed, you know, your house in Dallas and mm -hmm. all this other stuff going on in your life. And, um, you know, you got to put that in the back of your mind and then and then go play hockey and then everything will, will, will take care of itself. And the, the Vancouver Canucks been been great uh, taking care of some stuff for me and, and making sure that you know, I got everything and, and everything's great. So, um, you know, besides that, you know, try to enjoy a little bit of the day. Yeah. Uh, Derek, a tweet from Christopher McNeil. Uh, how long did it take for you to be recognized on the street? Um, not much. I think uh, a couple times people try and take pictures of me <laughs> jumping in the cabs and things like that. So it's, um, oh, it's great. I think it's a uh, great hockey atmosphere and everyone's, uh, like I said, everyone supports their team very well. And um, oh, it's great to be here and uh, great to be part of this organization. To make the transition somewhat easier, turns out you got Ken here. Your brother RJ is here, right? Yeah. And uh, he's an aspiring actor, is he not? Yeah, he does uh, some a little bit of acting on the side, but uh, you know he's been he moved to Vancouver three years ago. Um, you know he enjoys it here. He said uh, the people are nice, and you know he's, he he told me get ready for uh, people. They're going to scrutinize every right. little play you're going to make. <laughs> so um, tonight I try to make sure I made every play right. So I, I know he played pro for a while. Here's a tweet from Ellen Ransford. Uh, I've seen Derek's brother's workout videos, and they are very enjoyable. What is that, RJ? Yeah. Okay. And she says, I'd like to know if Derek has any hashtag shirtless for sure. Or shirtless, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, my, brother, my brother does some training on the side, trains one-on-one, uh, -on -one, some, some, some people one-on-one. -on -one, so, um, you know, he's been working out forever. So he's, 
Yeah, I don't know about shirtless, though, but... <laughs> no, it was you she was talking about, I think. <laughs> you were a staple in Buffalo, 32-goal uh, scorer there in 07-08, and as I said earlier, there for eight years. Um, then last July, the trade to Dallas. Uh, so now Vancouver. Question is, why do you think you've been with three teams in less than a year? Um, you know, uh, Buffalo wanted to, uh, you know, wanted to change it up and... and uh, you know, it's, uh, I was there for a long time, so that was, that was definitely tough. Um, you know, scored a lot of goals and um, played a lot of big games for that organization. Mm -hmm. Went to the conference finals and, um, you know, one win away from the Stanley Cup finals. So there was, uh, you know, it was tough. And, and um, you know, when, when I got to Dallas, everyone welcomed me a lot. And then, um, you know, a couple of injuries at the start of the year again and, and uh, set me back. But... Um, you know the team in Dallas had a few injuries going on as well, so uh, we didn't we didn't have the season that we wanted there, and then um, couldn't get a deal done in, in Dallas for a long-term extension. So um, traded me here, and, and uh, you know, like I said in some of the interviews before, everything happens for a reason, and yeah. you know, hopefully this is uh, you know uh, a Stanley Cup on the rise. Hey, that leads to the obvious question. Got to ask this: You're viewed as what's called a rental player because your contract expires at the end of this season. Um, is it your intention now to hit the market as a coveted free agent center? He asked really uh, tough questions. Uh, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, won't want well, you know, either, trust me. <laughs> you know I had to ask that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it's a great organization. Everyone's everyone's great here, and, and uh, you know, I just want to do my part, help win hockey games. That's for sure. Um, it's uh, you know, it's a tough situation as a as a rental player. People saying you're a rental player and whatnot. Um, you know, I've never been in that position in my career, and. And uh, like I said, you just got to put a lot of stuff in the back of your mind. There's a lot of stuff going on, mm -hmm. uh, the media, you know, your house back and, and whatever. Your parents are in Ottawa and all these, how they're going to get here and visit. So just a lot of things in the, you got to kind of like take some and put some in the back of your mind and, and move forward and, and just focus on winning hockey games. It's more difficult getting traded during the season, isn't it, than as opposed to the off season? I think so. I think, uh, you know, in the off season, I, I got to, you know, meet everybody. Yeah. And, you know, get accustomed to everything and slowly uh, make my way as a as a player for that team. Here, you just jump right in the fire and, and go right on the ice. When, but the guys made it uh, made it easy for me. So, yeah. um, you know, a great bunch of guys, like I said before, and it made it a lot easier. Good. Well, uh, you certainly changed the complexion of the Canucks game in your debut here on Thursday against Edmonton, playing with Higgins and Hanson. It was a, a wonderful fit for you on that line. Um, what did you think of it? Uh, you know, both guys got great speed. Uh, you know, Higgy is is flying down the wing all the time, and so is so is Hans. So we we were trying to make plays throughout the whole game, and um, tonight as well, we we, we made some little plays, but we got to finish some goals. Uh, I think you know we need some secondary scoring, mm -hmm. uh, especially the Sedins are are going hot right now. So we got to pick up our, our slack and uh, get some goals in the back of the net. When do you know you have chemistry with a guy? Um, I think, I think right away. I think uh, you know Higgins always open for some mm -hmm. reason. I don't know what he's doing out there, yeah. but he's always open. <laughs> so uh, you know, I stole the puck a couple of times, and those guys get right to the net. So uh, I'm just trying to find them as much as I can, and, and somehow I'm finding Higgy a lot more. So I have to distribute it to my right side once in a while. <laughs> Listen, you grew up in Ottawa, where as a kid you turned a few heads on the ice. When did you know that you had a chance to? Well, there you are, and that would have been at the age of. <laughs> uh, that was novice. I was playing for Clarence Creek, um, Castal de Clarence Creek, Beavers. <laughs> so question is, when did you know that you... eight years old, eight or nine. Eight, now. okay. Well, so it was well after this, but when did you know you had a chance to make a living from hockey? Um, if you asked my dad, he would have said right there. Uh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> he would have said I was going to the NHL when I was eight or nine. But, um, you know, I didn't have the size like a lot of the players and... and uh, People were always doubting, um, doubting my size and everything. And when I got drafted to junior, we had our um, our general manager was Jamie McDonald, who is uh, who coached me as growing up, mm -hmm. and it was a friend of my dad. So he said he knew uh, I was a good player and that I would do things in the OHL, help team win hockey games. So drafted me, told my dad I was going to play a lot. And that first year, I, you know, won rookie of the year and, and had a lot of points and, and and played in all the situations. And you know, he put me in all those 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 situations to to succeed and. You know, I thank him for that and then move forward and my career got confident and, and kept doing that throughout my uh, junior years. Buffalo drafted you in 01, sent you back to 32nd overall, so sent you back to junior and it turned out to be the right decision because in 03 you won the Memorial Cup with Kitchener and you were the, uh, the MVP of the tournament, uh, but that had to have you thinking you were ready for the NHL, did it not? 
Well, yeah, it was, uh, you know, right, right away when, uh, you know, when I got sent down, um, you know, I had a good, really good training camp, but then um, I got sent down right after, and, and then during the exhibition games, I didn't play as well as, you know, I, I could have, and, and um, you know, that was that was a great moment right there, <laughs> winning, the, you know, <laughs> winning the World Cup, especially for from a town like Kitchener, it was a hockey town, and, you know, we had some good players on that team, and, and, and good coaching as well, you know, Steve Spa and uh, Pete DeBoer, and Mike Richards, Clarkson, Eminger, we had a lot of, uh, Campbell as well, we had a lot of good players, so, um, you know, those are moments that will last forever, and that you know, never forget, but, you uh, uh, yeah, we had a good team that year. It was fun. In hindsight, was it the best decision to send you back? For sure. I, I didn't think I played as, as as well as I could have in the exhibition games. And mm-hmm. and then when they sent me back, and I built more confidence. And yeah. even the next year, they sent me down to Rochester to uh, develop. Um, they didn't want to throw me on the fourth, third or fourth line and, and not play at all. So they wanted me to go down there and score some goals and make some points and then could call back up. Yeah. Tweet from Debbie Brooks, the OHL Rookie of the Year, the Memorial Cup MVP. What's next for you? The Conn Smythe Trophy with Vancouver? You don't, you don't, you don't have to answer that, but, no but that, that'll give you an idea of the expectations here. Um, hockey's been good to you. You need only look at your magnificent cottage in the Muskokas to realize that. It's been featured on TV, so this is not a breach of privacy. Uh, how many people stay in this place on a given weekend? <laughs> uh, my parents come down a lot. Uh, they're from Ottawa, obviously. This place is in Muskoka. It's probably a four-hour uh, drive. you got to get through Algonquin Park. Um, you know, so they come down a lot. My dad loves to fish. Uh, a little bit too early for me. Wakes up at around 5 or 6 in the morning, goes wow. out fishing, and then goes back at night. So sometimes I'll, I'll join him at night going fishing. But uh, it, it's, it's a great spot, you know, to, to entertain, to, to have people over, to have friends and, and family. Uh, my mother um, during the season had all the aunts and uncles and all their friends over and stuff. Nice. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's. So this time. is family oriented. This place. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, a little of both. You know, I, I got some some friends that I call over, but uh, you know, usually uh, a lot of family members uh, stop by. Well, I checked out the video as well. Who sleeps in all those beds in the basement? <laughs> How many do you have there? Those are just in case. Uh, yeah, those are just in case somebody <laughs> needs to crash. <laughs> it, lo- it looks like you're pretty good on the wakeboard as well. I don't know if we have that video. I think we do. Um, and when we see it, is that you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's me. That's, that's not me. A couple of buddies. That's oh. uh, Scott Croxel. There's a couple of uh, buddies that do uh, wake surfing and a couple of pro wakeboarders on the lake. And, and they, uh, you know, I stay for so I stay away from a lot of backflips and stuff. I don't want to get hurt. But some of those I guys bet. are pretty amazing. And you just sit on the back of the boat and watch them and marvel at some of the moves they do. You're active on Twitter. Your profile um, at Roy Niner says that you went from the strawberry patch to the NHL. Explain. Um, you know, one of the uh, one of the things about junior is you don't make a lot of money, and you know, when you go back home, you got to get a summer job. So, um, you know, after I think my first year junior, uh, I probably had a hundred bucks in the bank yeah, account, yeah, so I sure. had to go I had to go work down. My mom said the strawberry patch down the streets looking for somebody to work for them. So, I, I took my bike down and <laughs> went to the strawberry patch, and they gave me a uh, the manager job. I don't know how I got that by yeah. default. Awesome. Started at the top. And, That's yeah, good. That's started good. Right, right at the top. And uh, as a nice old lady, um, you know, I ran the, ran the place, and it's just about taking phone calls, make sure all everyone gets their baskets, and pick. And I don't pick the strawberries. I send people out to get go pick the strawberries. But it was a, uh, it was fun. So you're was, good at delegating authority. Yeah, right. for sure, for sure. Yeah. You're not doing that job now. That's funny because my little brother was was really young at that time, maybe 10 years old, and I had him go pick at strawberries and bring them back for people. So Perfect. Um, we found a couple of pictures of you in the Canuck locker room tonight getting ready for the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Who left the fridge open? <laughs> Dodgeball. Those, of course, are Halloween costume pictures that you tweeted, I think, a long time ago. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> take um, a flyer on the explanation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the guys in, in Buffalo always always razzed me about, you know, what I dress and, and, and everything. So um, when, I, when I do... Um, Halloween, I want to go out and, and uh, you know have fun with the team and, and make sure I get a laugh out of it. So I had a couple of things. I was the ultimate warrior one year because uh-huh. the boys were calling me warrior in the locker room. But um, you know it's funny. It's uh, it's all it's all fun and games. And uh, you know s- some guys go all out and, on uh, Halloween and posted yeah. those pictures. Pretty funny. Yeah. Roy or Rawa? Well, uh, I. Uh, that's a good question. And Junior, the announcer, came to ask me, he's like, what do we want to call you, uh, Derek Roy or Derek Hawa? And I said, 
um, Roy um, just to make it make it easy for you and then he's he said okay so ever since then ever since I was 16 they've been calling me Roy and then that just um, you know stayed but were you born as Derek Roy um, sort of. I mean, my dad's my whole my whole dad's side is French. Um, he has four sisters, and they're all French. Um, you know, grandparents French, and then on the other side, my mom is completely English. So I don't know. Um, they met. I guess my dad was driving the Zamboni when he was playing junior. And uh, long story, it was uh, you know he's wearing purple purple stuff because he didn't know how to. Uh, wash his clothes so he put everything in in the thing and all the stuff came out purple <laughs> and the dye ran. so he's driving the zamboni and my mom saw him and she's like who's this idiot driving the zamboni with purple stuff on and that's how they met so my mom was english my dad was french and then uh you know that's how uh, that's how they met okay so your father is felix yeah so when he introduces himself to somebody does he say i'm felix roy or well, i'm felix roy well if he introduced someone french it'd be felix roy and then english be roy so um <laughs> He, uh, and Dad's a food salesman, has been for years, and he works with uh, both sides. He li lives in Ottawa, so there's a lot of, it's half and half, half French, half English, so, um, you know, he speaks half and half, and my mom understands um, French, but she doesn't speak it, so they threw me in a, a French school when I was five years old and all the way through, so um, thank them for that, okay. so now I know it. Nine years in the league, you've got to stick with Roy. Yeah, for sure. It's easier for us. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, is it? Yeah. All right. It Just is. for you guys, I'll stick. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Derek Roy. Uh, two games into his career as a Vancouver Canuck, our guest on After Hours.